All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so today I'm gonna to be going over some of the implicit differentiation problems. So there are only three parts suggested. Um, they were 1C, 1D, and 2B. So those are the problems we will go over. And I'll try to make it quick so we don't have another 30 minute video. But even if that is the case, you can easily skip through, so no big deal. All right, so for starters, I'm going to assume 1A is done and 1B is done with no problem. Now, 1C says find the coordinates of the two points on the curve where the line tangent to the curve is vertical. So I want you to pay attention to the language that they're using here. They're calling it the curve, not the function. <clears throat> That's because this equation represents a set of points that satisfy this equation. Um, and that graph is not a function. And so if a graph is not a function, they, they call it a curve. Um, and notice it says it's a closed curve. So basically, just paying attention to all the language being used, we can get the sense that this curve sort of looks something like, like this maybe. Who knows if it looks exactly like that, it doesn't really matter because we don't need to see the exact graph to, to solve these problems. But just for future reference, when you hear closed curve, when you see an equation that has the X's and Y's like intermingling, um, that does not necessarily mean that you have a function and it really it means that you might have a curve. Think of about the equation of a circle for, for an example. <clears throat> so anyway, moving on. The next part of this says where the line tangent to the curve is vertical. All right, so basically we're looking for the tangent line that is vertical. So a vertical tangent line, so I'll draw. Ooh, there we go. Let's say that's one of them. Let's say this is another one. Again, my art skills, please, please, please ignore them. But this is basically um, just giving you a sense for what they might look like, okay? But what they look like, again, doesn't matter as long as we understand that a vertical tangent line means that the derivative dy dx is undefined, right? One of the things we know, okay, one of the things we know uh, is that if a vertical line has an undefined slope. So we're gonna take our derivative expression from part A. <clears throat> this is the equation that generates the slopes for all points on, on the curve. And so what we're doing is we're gonna use this this slope generating equation to figure out, well, when is the slope, or when are the slopes undefined? And since this is a fraction, we know really what we're looking for is, when is that denominator zero? When zero. Um, so <clears throat> it's as simple as taking that denominator, two times y cubed plus one, setting it equal to zero, and solving and you end up with y is equal to negative one. So that's the only y value that will make the denominator zero. And so it must be true that at these, we already told there are two points, so it must be true that at these two points on the curve um, <clears throat> where the tangent line is vertical, that the y coordinate must be negative one. So I'm gonna go ahead and Call this x comma negative one, and this is x comma negative one. And since there are actually two points, let's call this x one, and let's call this x two. So we're not done yet. The goal now is to find the values of x one and x two. How can I do that? Well, <clears throat> I know that y is equal to negative one, and I also know that these two points lie on the curve, and therefore, uh, they must satisfy the given equation. So we have x squared plus 2x plus y to the fourth plus 4y 
equal to five. And again, um, if a point lies on the curve, then those coordinates must satisfy this equation. So right now we, we know that y is equal to negative one and I'm solving for x. So I'm gonna leave x as unknown, x squared plus two x plus, I'm gonna plug in negative one for y. That must equal five. And you're gonna see that we're gonna end up with just a quadratic. So x squared plus two x. Um, so I have negative one to the fourth, which is just one plus four times negative one is negative four, and then that's equal to five. And I'm gonna move the five over to, the, to this side. Um, ultimately, we have a negative eight over here and a zero on the right side. <clears throat> so I'm solving this quadratic equation, and it's just a matter of factoring. So x minus uh, two, x minus two times x plus four is equal to zero. And this tells us that x equals negative four and two. And there we have it. Notice there are two x coordinates. One of them is your x one. The other one is your x two. And so just for completeness sake, let's write the coordinates of the two points. So our two points, are negative four, negative one, and two comma negative one. And there you have it, part C done. All right, moving on to part D. Is it possible for this curve to have a horizontal tangent at points where it intersects the x-axis? Explain your reasoning. All right, so first of all, now we're dealing with horizontal tangent. And we're also talking about points that necessarily must intersect the x-axis. So let's take those two pieces of information one at a time. First of all, horizontal tangent. So again, I'm gonna take the derivative equation because that, that is the equation that generates our slopes for this curve. Uh, negative x plus one all over two times y cubed plus one. Now, we are told that there are horizontal tangents in this problem. Horizontal tangent means that the slope is equal to zero. Well, the slope will be equal to zero if this numerator is equal to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take the numerator and set it equal to zero. And we see that in order for the numerator equal to zero, to equal zero, the uh, value of x must be negative one. All right. So we have that x must equal negative one. And then we're also told that the tangent, uh, sorry, we're also told that this point or these points must intersect the x-axis. Well, looking at a coordinate grid, for a point to intersect, let's say a curve looks like this, anytime the point intersects the x-axis, Notice all of these points, what do they have in common? Well, y is equal to zero. So basically, we know that if a point intersects the x-axis, then its y-coordinate must equal zero. All right, great. So in theory, um, the point negative one comma zero will have a horizontal tangent line. But the question is, does this point actually exist on the curve? Right? So again, let's say this is the curve. Not every single point on the coordinate plane exists on this curve. There are only, um, only the ones on the very edge or the circumference of this curve would satisfy the equation. So we need to make sure, or we need to test these points or these coordinates inside of the equation to see if these coordinates actually satisfy the equation. If not, then we will say that it is not possible for the curve to have horizontal tangents at points where it intersects the x-axis. So let's take the original curve, x squared plus 2x plus y to the fourth plus 4y equals 5. 
and we simply plug in the points that would be necessary to satisfy both of those conditions, horizontal tangent and crossing the x-axis. So uh, negative one squared plus two times negative one plus zero to the fourth plus four times zero. The question is, does that equal five? And you can plainly see uh, that this is actually on the left side here, uh, negative one. And of course, that is not equal to five. So what that means is the point negative one comma zero is not on this curve. And therefore, um, it is impossible for both those conditions to be met. On this curve. Who knows, maybe, uh, I mean, definitely these conditions can be met for other curves, but for this particular curve, no, it's not possible to have a horizontal tangent line at a point where it intersects the X axis. Okay, boom, moving on. 2B, all right, so uh, this is a differential equation. So what we were doing last week um, so let's just set it up, dy over dx. So this is, we're doing part B. Again, I'm just gonna assume that you, you did part A fine, since no one suggested that I go over it. So dy over dx is equal to y squared times six minus two x. Uh, now I should separate the variables. This does happen to be a separable differential equation, so that's pretty nice. So dy over y squared is equal to six minus two x dx. And of course I should integrate. Okay. Um, one over y squared can be written as y to the negative two. I'll leave the, le uh, the right side alone for now. Okay, so now on the left, we would, we would like to integrate this, so we have y to the negative 1 over negative 1. That's just the power rule of integration. This is equal to 6x minus x squared plus c. Okay? And really, it's at this point that I'm going to use the initial condition. No reason not to. My initial condition is f of three is equal to four. So I'm gonna, uh, sorry, f of three is equal to one fourth. And so I'm gonna plug in, so I have y, I have one fourth to the negative one over negative one is equal to six times, what was it, three? Yeah, six times three minus three squared plus C. So our, our job is now to solve for C. Um, that left side simplifies to negative four, right? One fourth over negative one, that's really one over one fourth, which is just four. And then divide that by negative one and you'll get negative four. On the right side, you have 18 minus nine plus C and you, can see that c is equal to uh, negative 13. Right, negative 13, yeah. Okay, I just had to take a, a quick break because I wanted to make sure that I had everything correct here. But yes, at this point, C is equal to negative 13. That looks good. So I'm gonna go back and take, pick up where we left off. So we, we were at Y to the negative one over negative one is equal to six X 
minus x squared plus c, all right? But we just found out that that plus c is equal to negative 13. So I'm just going to replace it with the negative 13. Okay, now remember the goal here is to solve for y to get our uh, particular solution. So first I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative one. So I have y to the negative one is equal to positive x squared minus six x plus 13. And y to the negative one is really one over y. I don't want that, I want y. So uh, basically, I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides to finish up. So we have y is equal to one over the entirety of x squared minus six x plus 13. And that is your particular solution. Okay, so this is the curve that satisfies, or this is the equation that satisfies the differential equation. Um, with this initial condition, Ooh, a lot of work, uh, f of three equals one fourth. Okay, um, I just wanna point out that depending on when you solve for c, at this intermediate step, you might have c is equal to positive 13 or c is equal to negative 13, depending on when you, uh, when you decide to plug in your initial condition, how much like simplifying you end up doing. But in the end, we should all have the same exact answer. So whatever you get for your value of C is not really significant um, because again, depending on what, where in the process of, of simplifying this equation, you decide to solve for C, we, we each get, might get different values. But again, in the end, we should all get the same particular solution. So don't pay attention to what I'm getting for C or what you're getting for C. Pay attention to what you get at the very end. That's, that's where we should meet and match. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that was uh, informative. I hope you have a great weekend and I will talk to you on Monday perhaps. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'll have a video Monday, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, take care.